Thank you for clicking in today to ETBU Extra, live from CC's in Marshall, Texas. We're on an hour earlier today because of uh, uh, some scheduling change with all the bad weather. We had Tiger softball and Tiger baseball get games in today at 3 and 5. And so uh, need to get the coaches here and a chance to visit with them and then get them out to the ballpark. Now we're joined by the head coach of Tiger Tennis, Jeff Bramlett. And, and Jeff, you're probably just as excited as the baseball and, and Tiger softball coaches to see sunshine in East Texas. Oh, yeah. We, we didn't know what that yellow thing was in the sky. We, we, we were fired up. It's so nice to be outside again. Well, let's talk about your Tiger Tennis team. You were able to get a match in last week uh, as we had a little break in the weather against the University of Mary Harden Baylor. And oh, both teams, both your ladies' team and men's team, so close to, to winning that matchup against Mary Harden Baylor. Kind of talk about what happened uh, during those matches. Yeah, first we were just glad to get on the court. It was 50-50 chance of rain, so we were excited. They came on down and just took a leap of faith, and we got out there and played the thing. Uh, we'd been working on doubles all week because uh, that seemed to be the thing that uh, we struggled on during spring break against the D2 school. So we did quite well in doubles. We took, jumped out to a 2-1 lead. And then, uh, unfortunately, we fell behind in the, in the singles. So uh, we're going back to the drawing board this week <laughs> a little bit in the singles. And, and uh, you know, going to have to work on that. We've just missed so much uh, practice time the week before. We kind of had to pick and choose what are we going to work on. Well, we worked, a, worked quite a bit on doubles last week. And, and, uh, and we had some battles there in, in, in the singles. And, and uh, uh, you know, Laramie Lynn, he, he had a great singles match and won in three set, uh, sets. And, and uh He's kept his winning streak uh, alive, undefeated in singles. Scott Martin won his singles match. Uh, I believe Laramie now is undefeated in singles and doubles. Him and uh, Connor Mason at the number three doubles. Uh, you know, we're keeping our streak alive there uh, it, with um, our number two boys doubles, too. They're doing great. Uh, Aaron and uh, Ryan Huss, uh, Aaron Longoria, they've uh, been on quite a streak at the number two boys doubles. Uh, or, or, like I say, our one and two girls doubles played lights out, and then... Uh, um, uh, Sierra Pizarro was actually a player of the week for the uh, Eastern Conference uh, this week. She, she did really well. Um, um, had an outstanding singles match, as did Elizabeth Morton. Uh, Elizabeth Morton's another one that could have been up for player of the week th this week and, and uh, did a great job at the number one girls doubles with, with uh, Kate Bramlett. Uh, and then we just had a couple of heartbreak losses there at the number one girls singles. Kate jumped off to... Uh, a quick lead uh, again at number one girl singles and then uh, and fell behind in the second set and ended up losing in three sets, uh, as did Kara Headquest. So if, if we win either one of those, uh, you know, obviously we win the, the dual match and we, we were very disappointed that we, that we lost the match 5-4 in both of them. Um, you know, because we, we felt like we, we, you know, we had it uh, just right there in our grasp. Uh, Tyler Talapka was another one. Uh, you know, had a, had a three-setter that he could have won. But, you know, looking at it, looking at the number of matches that we've played uh, compared to Mary Harden Baylor and some of these other schools we're looking, some of them have got eight, ten matches. I think uh, we've got maybe three Division three matches mm -hmm. that, that we've played this year. And, and uh, the number of practices that we've gotten in compared to these other schools, you know, we, we've... Uh, we're doing pretty good uh, compared to the amount of tennis that we've been able to get in. So, so looking at that, that that's the positive. And we're, we certainly don't have to worry about peaking too early, as I told the kids. So we, we don't want to peak till April. That's when it really counts, uh, when we play Letourneau April 2nd. So that, that's what we're aiming for is to start playing our, our best tennis against Letourneau and Ozark. So, that, so that's the game plan. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. I agree with you, Coach. Visiting with Jeff Bremmett, head tennis coach at ETBU. Now, Coach, I know most tennis fans are very familiar with the single game they see Wimbledon they see the singles matches but what type of players it take to come together to play a doubles match there's some there's some teamwork that has to involve kind of talk about the different game that a doubles match is as compared to a singles game yeah it's almost like uh, two completely different sports if you, 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 you know sometimes it takes more athletic ability it takes a lot more strategy you, you can honestly go out in a doubles match and you can beat two people that are better than you in tennis so you can do it with strategy uh, you can do it with tactics, uh, um, or as in singles, sometimes if they're better than you, uh, sometimes there's just only so much that you can do strategy-wise uh, to, to beat them. But in doubles, I always believe you've got to have a hammer and a wedge. By hammer, I mean you've got to have somebody at the net that will end the point. They'll put the ball away. But by, by wedge, I mean you've got to have somebody that's going to be consistent, that's going to keep the ball in play and, and uh, you know, keep it in play and that's going to set your, your partner up. So we try to always have a hammer and a wedge. On, on each court. Some, sometimes you, you can have two hammers on each court, but, but uh, you've got to allow your hammer to be aggressive. You've got to allow them to, to go for the shots. And, and if you have, 
and they're going to make more mistakes typically than your wedge. So if you, if you put two hammers together, sometimes you don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> sometimes <laughs> balls can be getting scattered all over the place. And, and so, uh, so you know, you, you try to have one consistent person on, on each court. And then, and then uh, I'm a big believer in coaching towards their, their strengths. I try to find out what each person's strengths are and try to try to – try to coach towards that so a lot, a lot, quite often on each court we got different strategy on each court sometimes we'll have two up strategy which means getting both people up the net sometimes it may be two back having both people back on the baseline sometimes it may be one up one back one person at the one net one person back and then based on the way, if it's one up one back then we got to decide you know do we do, do we do we want to go traditional style you know just cross court from each other do we want to line up do like the australian formations one up one back and, and you know try, try to line ourselves with uh, forehands in the, in the center of the court. Do we have stronger backhand volleys, stronger forehand volleys? Are we left-handed? Are we right-handed? So a lot more strategy that goes in, into the doubles. And and, uh, and then based on that, you know, you're, you're trying to get that lead, you know, that all-important lead and try to get the momentum going, going into the singles, per particularly if you're playing a team that might be a little bit better than you. You know, try to try to have that lead so that uh, you know you can maybe eke out some of those singles matches if, if they are considered a little better than you in the singles. I knew the strategy in doubles matches were different, but didn't know that you really had that many different com com combinations <laughs> that you can use to go against your opponent. Now, when when how difficult is it for you as a coach to put two players together to be a good doubles team? It, it, it's pretty difficult. It, it takes a lot. You know, sometimes it, it, you know you got to. You know, you got to decide: can they serve and volley? Can they return and volley? You know, and you, you watch them all fall long, and you know, it kind of goes into the computer bank, and you, you talk about, you talk to them about. It. It's got to be a chemistry. Do they get along? Do they enjoy playing together? They're very important with girls. Sometimes not as important with the boys. The the boys, you know. Sometimes they don't care. They, they, all they care about is just winning. We want to win, Coach. We, we could care less. We can't even stand each other. We just want to win. The girls, they, they like to get along together and you know, have fun. So the chemistry is more important. But, but you got to find out if, if the, the chemistry is there and then do, the, do their styles mesh together. And then if their styles do mesh together, then what are their strengths and weaknesses? Can, are they capable of serving and volleying? If if they're not, do you have one serving volleyer that you put with one person back, and then and then are they capable of playing number one? Are they capable of playing number two doubles? Are they capable of playing number three? Because then you got is a chess match. Will that work at number one doubles? That style will that work at number two or will it work at number three? Is typically you got to have more aggressive people at one. You know, the, the less aggressive people that those styles of play typically will work a little bit more at two and three. And and then uh, you know with counter punching, what will you know will it work? Uh, and the mid it typically works a little bit better at the, at the mid part of the lineup. So then, then you, you look at that and then, and then just pray it all works. And then try not to outthink yourself. <laughs> well, they'll either make you look real smart or real stupid in a hurry. Your, your, your players will. Well, I, well, what you brought up to me was how, you know, I just look at a tennis match. Oh, they're out there playing tennis, hitting the ball around. But there's a lot of strategy involved, a lot of thinking about what you're going to do, much like strategy that happens in a basketball game or a football game. It's just being competitive at the NCAA level and, and, and go out and watch a match at Veterans Memorial Tennis Complex and just see the strategy that these players use to try to get the victory. Now, once again, your dedication service for Veterans Memorial Tennis Complex, Kent Reese, athletic director, told me that it's been rescheduled again for Friday, April 17th at noon. So. People can look for that on their calendar. It's, yes, it's going to be at noon, April 17th, and, and by golly, we're going to make it happen. Weather permitting. Pray, everybody pray for uh, good weather on, on that. And uh, the big thing is we, we couldn't, all of our donors, we've been so blessed to, to make this thing happen and come together. They, that's the one day that they all could be there. And we really want them all to be a part of this because they, they've made this thing happen. So. Uh, you know, re rather than try to have it on a Saturday where it's a little easier for travel and for parents and things like that to happen, rather than having it sooner, we decided it would be better to have it later where all of the, the donors could be there. Now, if, if we can't do it then, uh, we had one of our players suggest, let, let's just do it next year and let's just have a one-year anniversary <laughs> grand opening. I, I, I don't know what we'll do if we can't get it in on April 17th, but we'll, we'll do a senior day slash a grand opening day on April 17th. Veterans Memorial Tennis Complex is located on the Tiger, excuse me, located on the ETB Tiger Campus. It's located at Tiger Drive in Van Zant, and I, I noticed as I've been driving by some activities happening with some signage that's gone up, as well as a, a big brick, I guess, facade that's going to, to 
tell folks exactly this is the Veterans Memorial Tennis Complex. You're glad to see those that, that, that activity happening. Uh, yeah, yeah. We, we wanted to, to be clear when you first pull in right there that this is the Veterans Memorial uh, Tennis Center. And, and, you know, we're trying to make it look like a, 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 a college uh, venue when they, they walk up there. And so, you know, with the, the tiger signs everywhere, and you're really trying to trying to help set the the, the st standard so to speak there and try try to make it look like a uh, a college stadium and and to, you know try to make it something that everyone will be proud of there Visiting with Jeff Brown, the head tennis coach at East Texas Baptist University. And, and Coach, I know one of your concerns with all this weather and rain was, are you going to get the required matches in to make the ASC tournament? How is that scheduling going for the rest of the year if, if weather permits us to continue to play? Yeah, I think it's looking pretty good now. You know, with the weather's looking good this weekend. You know, get two matches in. Uh, uh, I think we ought to be all right as far as the number of matches that we'll need to, 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 to hit that quota before the conference tournament. So now, now really it's just up to us playing well and, and you know, trying to hopefully rack up some wins and, and actually get enough wins to qualify for the uh, conference tournament. That, that's going to be the, uh, you know, the biggest concern at this point. Have Southwestern, who is not part of our conference, coming in Friday, and then Howard Payne on Saturday. If folks want to come out, what's the best place to watch a tennis match out at the Veterans Memorial Tennis Complex? Where is your recommendation to sit? Oh boy, there's honestly not a bad place to sit. You know, it's it, it, it's it's designed that way. It's designed to be, you know, first and foremost player friendly, but it's also very spectator spectator. That's a hard word. Say that ten, ten times. Spectator one time, folks. So, there you go. Spectator friendly as well. But uh, we've got the bleachers set up over there. We've got grass. We need to set up your uh, um, uh, uh, lawn chairs out there as well. But uh, you, you can literally sit next to each court out there. Just uh, who, whoever you come out there to watch uh, play, you can literally be right next to their court. Coach, anything you want to say before we go? Uh, no, just hope everybody has a great day and hope to see you out uh, to, to the matches this weekend. All right. Coach, Best of luck to your Tiger tennis team this weekend. All right. Thank you much. All right. Visiting with Jeff Brown, the head Tiger tennis coach at ETBU. And that's going to wrap up our show today here on ETB Extra Live from CC's in Marshall. Had a chance to move everything up an hour today because of some rescheduling of games happening on campus today because of all the weather we had. do want to mention that the Texas Relays are happening in Austin, Texas uh, this week. And we have two Tiger track members who will be running in those relays. Matthew Berry and Roy Butler have qualified to run in the Texas Relays. So look up uh, for you uh, track fans out there. Look for see how they do running in the Texas Relays. relays representing ETBU this weekend. Well, that's like I said, it's going to wrap it up for today's ETB Extra. I want to say thank you to Josh McSwain and Adam Ledyard. At e oh, we have another person coming in. Okay, all right. We will be back. I don't know who it is yet, but we will be back to talk more in just a moment. We have a guest coming in, so when we take this break and get things set up, we're not yet ready to get out of here at CC's Pizza. Back with more ETBU Extra in just a moment.